Hello, it's Scott Manley here playing some Kerbal Space Program and after trying to do some of those huge, long interplanetary missions with ginormous rockets, I thought I'd go back to basics and see just what I could do with the smallest rocket I could build, or at least the rocket with the fewest number of parts. Now, what we have here is a small capsule. Of course, we're using a small capsule because it's the least mass. We have the largest fuel tank in the game because, of course, we want to get the most fuel for our part. And then we fit the aero spike onto that. And the reason we use the aero spike is it's the one of two engines that can lift that large fuel tank under its thrust. And uh, it's way lighter than the other engine. Furthermore, the other engine has much lower specific impulse and vacuum. So I think this is going to do as well. And so I'm just time accelerating my way through a launch into orbit. This is a an incredibly delicate procedure because you can do this uh, repeatedly and get you know completely different amounts of fuel left when you get into orbit and it took me a lot of practice to come up with a trajectory that I figured was relatively good. And so you see us coming up. You see of course there's uh, some other bits and pieces lying around from other missions. Um <laughs> Uh, so here we go. We're aiming for a 100 kilometer orbit because that's a nice round number, I guess. Uh, I mean, you don't want to get too high up because you're trying to conserve fuel. And what I've been doing is trying different approaches and aiming for the same orbit. And then I would figure out how much fuel I had left. And so I've been basically, you know, trying to optimize this to get a perfect, uh, perfect launch trajectory. So here we go. Just trying to circularize the orbit, trying to get it as close to circular as possible. Just takes tiny amounts of thrust at this level, and yeah, that's us getting pretty close. I think I think we're gonna call that an orbit now. So there we go. Well, maybe a little more. Just trying to get it as close to a hundred kilometers. Okay, one hundred four ninety-seven. Okay, so that's roughly plus or minus four kilometers. So how much fuel do we have left? Four hundred and nine. That is um, two tons of fuel. So the spacecraft mass right now is roughly 5.8. And the dry mass will be 2.8. We have less than two kilometers per second delta V there. Now, uh, let's uh, go places. Well, there's Minmus. And Minmus is the furthest out, but it requires the least delta V for landing. So uh, let's uh, head out that way and see what we can do. It is also perfectly lined up, and I believe in targets of opportunity. So, of course, this is just a standard Minmus injection orbit. It looks like... Let me see. It looks like the encounter position might actually be pretty close to the plane. Let's see if we can get the orbit right on top of the, the target. And just adjusting this very carefully... So, I mean, this will be the biggest burn I do in space. This will probably take about 200 and something units, 200 units of fuel. This will take half my fuel to get out here. Um, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, it, it's not sure. It's not sure. So what? when you see it flickering like that, the trick is you uh, time accelerate, and if it doesn't catch it, you try again. And there I am. So I've caught it in the time accelerated mode. Now I can head out to this planet uh, and this moon. I think, let's let's take a look at this. How much fuel? 150. Okay, so I didn't take... I took more than half. I took 250 units of fuel, basically. And uh, I guess I still have plenty left, so I'm going to try putting it into orbit around this. Um, I guess I'm in a kind of polar orbit here. I'm just going to adjust. I don't want to fly past. That's the worst thing, is, is when uh, you come out of time acceleration mode, or when you switch sphere of influence, your your apparent velocity can change by quite a bit. It can really catch you off guard. So there we go. Okay, um, let's let's get this into orbit. Now, if I'd really been thinking ahead, I would have uh, adjusted my inclination to bring my perimin as close as possible. And the reason is. If you want to get into an orbit, and you don't care that it's a circular orbit, you want to do your burn as close to that target as possible, because then the Oberth effect will help you. <coughs> Pardon me. It'll reduce the amount of fuel needed to uh, enter and the amount of fuel needed to escape. That's assuming you're not going for a circular trajectory. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go for a, a circular trajectory here so that I can pretend that I meant to do that. 
So yeah, burning up a lot of fuel here. Uh, I guess we're 1,700 kilometers above the surface. I know that it's possible to EVA down to the surface from a, a 10 kilometer orbit. I very much doubt that is possible from a 1,700 kilometer orbit, but uh, no doubt someone out there who is better than me shall prove me wrong. Okay, so I'm down to 114 fuel units. That means I used roughly 36 getting into orbit. That means we'll probably need to use about the same to get back out of orbit. But uh, while we're here, we should <coughs> do some research. I'm sorry, I, I just got up in the morning and I think my uh, throat is a little gummed up. I need a cup of tea. Uh, or a beer, but I am supposed to go to work, so I'll go with the tea. So yeah, I'm waiting for either the, the pass over the top or the bottom to line up with the orbit. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so that is our exit burn. We're going to burn along this vector and try and take us back towards the inner planetary system. And uh, here we go. That will, of course, bring our peri uh, perikeet down towards the planet. And there we go. We just want to try and use as little amount of fuel as possible here. because we want to make sure we have as much left as possible for a landing. Yes, I do intend to land this vehicle back on the surface, even though it has, by the time I'm done, it'll have less than a ton, a hundred units of fuel. Uh, here we go, getting close. It It's kind of deceptive because as you turn over, you see that I have got quite a bit of inclination. If I could adjust that inclination, I'd prefer to put it closer to the plane of the moon's orbit. Because it would be really nice to have a, an encounter with the moon on my way home. That way I would uh, complete, yeah, I would visit all the bodies in the system. But it's not, uh, I'm just moving very slowly. I really want if to, if there is an encounter, I don't want to miss it. I honestly can't tell. I'm not planning this in any way. And we're not seeing anything. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, look, we're going to have a moon encounter. Yes. That's great. Now, the question is, will this, uh, will this, gra will this perform a gravity assist for us? No, uh, we all know about gravity assists. You enter, you pass, fly past a target in the mess with your orbit. Unfortunately, in the standard game, with when you before you change the config, you can't tell what your orbit's going to be until after you actually get into the sphere of influence of the planet. Now, I'm going to fly around the back of the moon here. That might mean it's going to kick me up and give me more energy. That in and of itself isn't a problem. Um, I know we're trying to get down. Yeah, okay, so look, we're going on to an interplanetary trajectory. We absolutely do not want to do that because we will not be able to return. So I'm going to try and... And what I need to do is perform a, a breaking burn here before I leave the sphere of influence so that I do not um, so that I do not fly off into interplanetary space. There look at there's the moon there, just taking a look, doing our science. Okay, get this breaking burn done. So we just need to bring it back inside the sphere of influence. There we go. Now, although we had to kill our velocity, um, we can still take advantage of this to get home using less fuel. Let's just see if we get some more encounters. Let's just zip around. It's always, maybe maybe we'll hit it again randomly, but, you know, yeah, it's going to be incredibly unlikely. Eventually we'll hit another one, and I don't want to spend forever because I do have to get to work. Uh, no encounter. Okay. So anyway, I was saying that it is actually, what we can do is because we have now raised our perikey as high as it will go without leaving the sphere of influence, the amount of thrust we need to bring our, app, our perikey down is vastly reduced. So when we're burning at Minmus's orbit, we were moving roughly 250 meters per second. Now we're out at uh, this orbit, we're moving at 100 meters per second. So the amount of velocity we have to kill has actually been reduced by the Mooner encounter. Even though it was a relatively small encounter, uh, 
it helped us just enough. So even though the energy kicked us up, we can actually use that higher apogee to uh, bring us back to the surface using less energy. So it's a win either either way. Of course, you know, maybe we had an encounter with the moon and just crashed straight into it. That would have been Ooh. embarrassing. We certainly don't have enough fuel to land on the moon. But we probably will have enough moon, fingers, uh, enough fuel, fingers crossed, to uh, kill our velocity near the surface of the planet Kerbin and bring us down to a safe landing velocity. As you see, I'm running the, the engines at minimum level because we do not want to overshoot. We don't want to waste any fuel. We're down to like 59 f fuel units. <laughs> this is a pretty uh, tight fuel budget here. We're going to have just over a quarter of a ton of fuel left. And there we go. 24 kilometers. Maybe we'll bring it down just a little more. Okay. And we are heading back to the surface. Just do a quick save. Hopefully I won't need it. Fingers crossed once more. Here we go. And then we'll just do a bit of time acceleration because the hardest parts with, with landing on the planet Kerbin like this with like no fuel budget is that you can't time accelerate through the atmosphere and therefore you it takes forever to retry. So uh, this is the longest part, this whole sitting, waiting for the, the air to slow you down as you descend upon the surface in a fiery ball of plasma or whatever you want. It would be nice when they add that. There we go, we're down to about five kilometers and we'll return to normal time. So what I'm trying to do is get an idea of how high the land is here. So we won't want to suicide burn this. We want to basically burn at the last second. But the biggest problem is we don't know where the actual ground is. So I'm going to be looking at the texture. And no doubt I've played Kerbal Space Programming now, enough now that there is some part of my brain that is understanding the texture detail and how it maps to an apparent altitude. I don't know. I just took a guess and I kind of started here and then realized it was too soon. So dropping a little more, I'm hoping that I'm going to get to the surface. Oh, there's the shadow. There. Oh, look, touchdown. Oh, no, we overshot that yeah, again. Oh, we're pogoing. Oh, there. Okay. Hey, we landed intact. See, nothing's broken. And we had fuel left. I could have totally landed that thing uh, if I wasn't so inept. But that's that's great. That's uh that's um smallest rocket you can build. Three parts and it, I visited every body in the game. There we go. It took uh fifty four days. Not bad. Well, let, I'm Scott Manley. I will see you guys around sometime. Fly safe.